Hello old friends and new friends. I'm glad to see you today because I want to share with you this easy recipe on how to make sesame brittle. You can make a brittle out of a lot of subjects such as peanuts, cocoa nips, pecans, other nuts and the choice is up to you. But today it will be sesame. Speaking of sesame, this recipe will need 100 grams of sesame. I've got myself white sesame but you can do this with black sesame or as a mixture of both. I'm gonna go ahead and toast them in a pan. This is to give it a deeper flavor and to bring out the color and oil. Remember, the darker the color, the richer the flavor. But don't go too dark, otherwise it will end up rather bitter and we don't want that. Make sure your pan is nice and hot. Pour the desired amount and don't walk away. You want to keep the sesame moving to avoid it from burning. Now is the best time to practice being a tosser. I live in the UK. Don't ever call anybody a tosser. I will let you Google why at your own time. I can smell the sesame releasing its aroma. It smells wonderful. It smells like a Chinese restaurant in my kitchen right now. All that's missing is some chicken and some rice. After a few minutes, the color is starting to go from a pale white to a goldenish brown. A little advice for you, you can always toast more sesame than you need for this recipe. I like having toasted sesames on standby in my kitchen. I enjoy them with a nice bowl of hot noodle soup or even over a soft boiled egg. Once you are happy with the color, take it off from the heat and place the toasted sesame on a tray with some baking paper. Spread the sesame out to stop the cooking process. Also, if you listen very, very carefully after you are done toasting the sesame, you can hear the small sounds of them crackle. It sounds very satisfying. Now, don't worry about washing the pan. We will still need it. We will be making a wet caramel. Pour in some water, but just enough to give it a shallow layer. It is best to note that I'm using a non-stick pan. I find this comes in handy when making caramel. The next thing that we need is some liquid glucose. Liquid glucose is there to help in the formation of good sugar crystals. This is also to help in the shininess of the caramel later on. Pour in about 50 grams of glucose. Next, we need 250 grams of caster sugar. 250 grams of caster sugar and 50 grams of glucose is a good ratio to 100 grams of sesame seeds. You can of course change the ratio if you want more sesame or more caramel to your end product. Pour in all of the sugar. Since it is a wet caramel, I don't have to worry about the sugar burning straight away. The wet caramel method will also ensure that all of the sugar will dissolve evenly. The next handy thing is a thermometer. This is an infrared gun. We want the caramel to reach at least 165 degrees Celsius. Right now, we're just above the 100 degrees Celsius mark. Give the liquid a bit of a stir, and to make sure it is done well, take some water and a brush to brush the sides of the pan. This will ensure that there are no bad crystals or worse, burning sugar on the sides forming to corrupt the rest of the liquid. Because after all, we don't wanna have that slightly burnt aftertaste. Now, we're not far off. We are around the 120 degrees Celsius mark. While we are at the 120 degrees Celsius mark, place the sesames in an oven set at 100 degrees Celsius. The reason for this is to warm the sesames up. We want the sesame seeds to be warm when being placed in the caramel later, because if the sesames was cold or at room temperature, the difference in temperature will shock the caramel and make it hard to fluidly work with. It will set the caramel too fast. Because the temperature isn't far off to reaching 165 degrees Celsius, the sesame won't be in the oven for too long. We are almost there. We are just below the 160 degrees Celsius mark. Make sure to keep the caramel moving to ensure that it is coloring evenly. I'm going to add in a hint of a second flavor. I have some vanilla bean paste. This is optional, but it helps with a backbone flavor. This also has the seeds in, and this helps to enhance the flavor profile. We are now at around the 164 degrees Celsius mark. I have about five grams of vanilla bean paste. Switch the flame off and pour in the vanilla bean paste. Then out comes from the oven, the sesame seeds, and you can also pour that in. Give that a good stir around. Don't rush as there is super hot caramel and you don't want to burn yourself. Just remember, the pan is still hot and the sesame seeds are also warm, so there is time to work with the caramel. So, now comes the optional part. I have a rolling pin here. I also have some rubber ring guides. These rings are there to help spread whatever you want evenly. If you don't have the rubber ring guides, I would recommend these rubber plank guides.
These two guides are the same in height at about 2 millimeters. They make everything so uniform and even when rolling. I also have a non-slip rolling mat for this project. You don't need a non-slip rolling mat as you can roll the sesame brittle on a baking paper. But remember, it will be hot. And I don't want it slipping or rolling around because the last thing I want is to burn myself. Next thing that I have is some oil spray or pan release. This is also optional, but it helps. I would recommend spraying a thin layer on the non-slip rolling mat. This will help with the rolling process. Pour the sesame caramel and place a sheet of baking paper on the top. And with your rolling pin, press evenly and roll. Don't worry about pressing too hard, as you have these guides to stop you from crushing the sesame seeds too much. You have to work rather fast here, because my table is rather cool. But you don't have to work too crazy fast. Just also remember, it is rapidly cooling down as you are rolling it thinner and thinner. All you need is just to go up and down a couple of times. The best part about it being rolled at 2 millimeters is that it is about 1 sesame seed in height. Let's come back a little later. Let it rest for about 30 minutes. After about 30 minutes, let's check. Let's try one piece. Ugh, that is so good. It makes for a great snack item or a lovely little garnish to your dessert. It just dissolves in my mouth so fast. In fact, I am going back for another piece. If I don't watch out, I will just continue to eat and eat. I'm also going to show you the structural integrity of this sesame brittle. It is thinly spread out, but it can still hold in this kind of shape. I also want to show you how sexy this is with an opacity test. Those of you who know me, I usually like to take my camera light and shine it from behind. You can see the individual sesame seeds suspended and light passing through. That is how thin it is. Now, for keeping it, you can keep this in an airtight container for a good week in a cool, dry place. I would recommend placing a piece of baking paper in between each sheet of sesame brittle and breaking off whatever you need at the last minute. This is a little side note. The smaller the pieces, the more they will attract moisture. Well, there you have it friends, sesame brittle. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like what you've watched, leave a comment, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Until next time, stay sweet like the sesame brittle and see you soon. Bye for now.